Welcome! We're doing a game review today. Um, I am going to be going over... Why is it not showing up? There we go. <coughs> I'm going to be going over two uh, Q-level Q games and putting out ideas um, and mistakes. I am going to be going feedback. over... Okay, so let's get started. Um, the thing I want to point out in the first game I'm going to be going over is the strength of an idea. Like, strength of consistently sticking to an idea. Um, in this game, I think white plays much better than black in terms of uh, local shapes and kind of making better uh, use of his, his stones. But black sticks to an idea and um, black comes out, come, ends up winning because white never acknowledges or deals with black's, uh, what black is aiming for. So, um, this game starts off fairly normal. White plays a little bit interesting move at the, at the 3 5 point, but it's not a big deal. So, the first move I want to point out is this one. You, we don't really see this move because in the normal continuation, um, the follow-up isn't very good for black, right? So, this situation, white gets a lot of points on the left side, but white still has a monkey jump into black's area, so black doesn't actually get many points. We play this F4 move when we want to emphasize the center more than we want to emphasize the side. So from the very beginning, because black is playing two Nidense points and a high approach, um, black is emphasizing the center. Okay, so continuing, um, in the actual game, white played the small response, or small nice response, which is not a bad move, but it doesn't contest the center. So. White will have to do something later to deal with the center if he wants to play this way. Black's next move is very strange to me, very questionable, because F3 doesn't... it, it does do a lot. It help, It aims at the corner, it blocks up the bottom side, and it does make these stones a little stronger. But it doesn't give, make a base, and it's a little bit slow. So White its next move is to approach the upper right, but I feel like most players in this situation would want to play a pincer or to secure the corner. If you secure the corner, this is forcing because black has to make a base. If black doesn't make a base, then white can start attacking these stones that black invested two moves in. So. Perhaps white's local play should be a, either to take the corner or to pincer directly. Um, black would probably then have to mix uh, some sort of shape. And then white could split. And this would be very good for white because white could... Oops. White could then make a formation inside of what black's original plan was, right? Black's original goal was to develop this kind of center bottom area. White ignores it. White plays on the top, and black pincers. Um, black almost always plays this pincer when he wants to develop the center. He also plays it to stop white from extending at the top. So black is trying to deny white's plan, but white isn't really um, stopping black's plan either. White takes the corner. This is the simplest response, and it's not bad. Um, Black walks this way, and this is a normal Joseki. And again, Black plays this move. This is usually considered to be very, very early to play this move. Um, but Black is again trying to aim for this kind of center, like large scale type of strategy. Normally, um, it's too slow for White to play the local follow up in response. But in this case, this move is really important. If White doesn't play this move, then. I mean, then, as we'll see later in the game, black can seal white in by playing um, here, which is actually what happened. And now all of black stones, 
seem to be mapping out a very large area. It, if this were maybe a dawn level game, we couldn't really claim that this is Black's area. But we see Black's plan, right? Black is aiming to try to take this huge area. And White is just taking points here and there, which is not bad, but doesn't consider what Black's doing. Um, this is not a good move. White should respond here. Uh, there's a little bit of Tawadi involved. If White plays this one, Black responds. So the reason White play okay. So the reason White plays this move is say White plays something else, then Black can play here. And if it's like this, then Black can link up these two groups, these two stones, and the corner um, no longer is as safe. So White wants to stop that. In the game, White plays here, but after Black responds, then if White plays elsewhere, Black can still play here and link up his stones. If white tries to separate, then black will cut, and these two white stones will die. And if white connects, then black will connect. And this is a pretty big loss for the corner, and kind of dangerous for white too. So what if white just descends? If white just descends, it's possible that black will respond. But then white can get Sente to play somewhere else first. If black doesn't respond, then white can later undercut the right hand side. And this is um, pretty big in terms of reducing black's area later. So it's not a good idea to play S13 because it's it's like trying to defend Incente, but you still end up having to play another move. Oh, this one's not good too. Another move to secure the corner. So you actually just end up making a worse exchange while still losing Sente. Um, also, this push is maybe not good because white, in theory, white could later aim at cutting this way or cutting somewhere else, in theory. So it's not a good exchange to play right away. But again, we see. Black stones are all still concentrated on forming this really big moyo. Um, black plays here. This isn't so important. Black's just um, negating white's potential, which is fine. This is also a very strange move. Normally, this move would be here, um, which is fine. Actually, this is probably a better move. But black is again playing in a kind of strange way that's emphasizing the center. And the most important thing isn't to say whether playing in the center is good or bad. Um, it's just that black is sticking to his plan. He's saying, I really want to emphasize the center. So then all his moves are focused on emphasizing the center while still trying to account for white's plans. On the other hand, white's kind of just going along at his own pace, which is not a bad thing either. But he doesn't account for what White's idea is, whereas when Black invades here, it's clear that Black is trying to stop um, kind of a white moyo over here with this wedge splitting move. So the main point is, I'm saying you have to be really, you really have to take into consideration what your opponents are planning to do. Um, so White removes the base because this move is high, and Black settles the shape. Again, Black doesn't want to take the points on the side. Who knows why. But instead, you know, this could be one way of settling. But instead, black wants to emphasize the center, so black does. Um, this is a little strange. Normally, after black extends, white would bump to prevent black from playing here. If black plays C10, it's Sente against white, so it's a good exchange to have. In the actual game, white just extends, so then black plays here. And white extends again. This is perhaps white's trying to take into account the center. And the this kind of... I can't even really call it a framework because it's still loose, but this kind of, you know, this area. Um, which is not bad, but it's a little slow. White, black plays here. White Atari's black descends. So black is basically settled on the left and so he takes a big point at the bottom. 
and we can see black stones are all working very well together right it's making this very big framework white is taking territory you know in the upper left in the upper right and kind of in the bottom left but he hasn't really um, <coughs> got made any progress into disrupting black's plan and if you compare the scale of what they're, what each side is trying to get it's pretty obvious black's trying to surround more than white is white takes the corner um, this is a normal joseki but black sticks to his plan to surround the outside it's a little bit better to play uh, o3 than p3 the reason is if you play p3 in the end game white can play this in sente this um, hane on the side but if you play o3 and white tries to hane then it's no longer sente so black saves a move by playing o3 instead of p3 uh, white extends this is a very calm move and it puts pressure on black's group but it's not clear if this is going to help white get over here too much and then this is kind of the really where the game starts really turning bad for white. The top is the top could be big, but it's not that big. What's important is this black moyo that's forming. White really needs to take care of this. But when you play at the top, the top this is taking a claim saying, okay, now white's gonna make trouble at the top. But if black just ignores it, right, and plays a move here for instance, it becomes very difficult for white to catch up. White can hide it under, but Black says, "Okay, you, you know, you, you got me. You got the top side." Uh, but Black still has this giant moyo that White has to deal with. Um, Black chooses the fight, which is possible too. The fight, through the fight, Black will solidify this moyo, um, and it becomes a different game. Or it just becomes a game. Uh, Black is attacking White, but you can see like. Throughout this fight, Black is starting to get some stones here. Um, this is a very good move by Black, playing the extension instead of connecting. It's kind of like the idea behind Black's stones at the top is he wants to live, right? And the idea behind J16 is to get out and make something, make a base on the side. So when White Ataris, it's too simple to expect Black to connect. Right, this is this defeats the purpose of J16. J16 wanted to get out and ahead, but now he had to go back and connect, so it's a slow move. Whereas here now J16 led to H16 and white is black is ahead of white. So even after white takes, black is sticking his head out so he can get some support, make a base, keep pressure on the center group. Um, a, a very important distinction. White finally decides to reduce. However, there's a weak group here. Black has stuck consistently to the center-oriented Moyo strategy. When you try to reduce or um, deal with a Moyo, you have to make sure the rest of your groups are solid, or else they'll fall into a splitting attack or counterattack. Uh, Black decides to defend. Black could um, jump here, threatening both the top group and the white stone. This would be more normal play. Um, black surrounds though. White kicks. Um, the idea is to settle himself easily. Although I think more normally white would want to jump in to reduce more. White could also just take care of this other group to prevent the splitting attack. But then black might get too much. Again, black is... so... This move is hard for me to really say. Like, it's not a good move. But the idea is clear. The idea is black wants to defend this cutting point. Why does black want to defend this cutting point? Black wants to attack this group. White reduces. Uh, black is also aiming at playing the Hana at N8. So it's kind of a Mi move. Not quite. Not it's not really, but um, it's an interesting idea. But 
even now, Black is sticking to his plan, just defending, solidifying the bottom, and he's he sacrificed in a way this territory in order to build an attack against this group. Black is pushing. He wants to split the two white groups into two groups. Um, these are just kind of normal sequences. Probably white should Atari at H12 first to make sure that his stones can get out. It looks a little bit dangerous, but white has this driving test strategy, and then white can definitely make sure that his stones at the top get linked together. And this is really important because now the top stones for black are weaker. And part of black's strategy was his first point was, okay, building this big moyo, right? And his second half was, okay, going to use part of this moyo to attack this group. But then if white gets settled, then there's not much of an attack that black can do. On the other hand, when it's like this, um, and this move is really painful, but it might not be better if black follows up. This is still in co. Um, it makes some exchanges. It's not really important. So after black plays here, white has to recognize that this group is getting surrounded. Right? Black is kind of stuck to this whole attacking idea. Um, but white doesn't. This move is inviting black to connect at g16. That If black connects here, which I think he does, then suddenly the center group is really dangerous. Um, this center group is, is in co, and the game will basically end up in co. Uh, it makes some exchanges at the bottom. And yeah, Black's like, you know what? I'm tired of answering all this, I'm going to kill your group. So Block plays on the vital point and starts a co. And now this whole group is in danger. Um, I'm going to stop here, because I don't think there's a lot of point in going through the rest of it. Black does end up, White does end up saving most, most of this group, but he's too far behind. Because White never dealt with Black's Moyo, or dealt with it enough. He allowed his group to come under attack, which let Black profit elsewhere. Even though Black played these very strange opening moves, the idea behind them was um, still good. While White's opening, his idea was to just take points and then he'll deal with Black's Moyo, but he never dealt with the Moyo, so then his strategy fell apart. Okay, we're going to go look at another game. Uh, I do not want to save it. Um, we're gonna look at another game. The show. Up. Yeah, this is in this game. White manages to win, and we're gonna look at um, the kind of play that White brought about to deal with it. Again, it's, this one is also about sticking to an idea. I think a lot of the play are on five Q. Hmm. I mean, okay, it, it kind of depends. 5Q, a lot of players have ideas, but they don't know how to act, what, use them. On the other hand, there are a lot of p players who know a lot of shapes, but have no idea how to use them. It kind of goes both ways. Or like, the first one is you have ideas, you don't know how to put them into practice, you don't know the shapes that make it work. And then there's the other half that's like, I know what shapes there are, but I don't know how to make them work together to form a, form a plan. And it's really important to have a plan, because if you don't have a plan, then you're just kind of playing, and if your opponent has a plan, they they basically have more drive, they have more sense of direction and know what they want. So their stones will generally work better. Okay, so from the start, with this move, this move is saying white wants the corner, white wants to take territory. White could also pincer, and then white would be saying, I want to develop territory between these two stones. But in this case, White's saying, okay, I'm going to play for territory. This is what we saw last game. And White's going to try to yeah, play territorially and then negate Black's influence strategy. <clears throat> so White approaches. Um, this is the correct direction to approach. Well, at least with the top. Or at least with the top right. I think 
more normal. Actually, white should probably approach the bottom right. Um, the three, four points is, in, we call this an incomplete corner. This, when you only have one stone that's not on the four, four, or three, three point. And usually it's bigger to play in an incomplete corner than it is to play in a complete corner. Um, because if black gets one more move in the, in the incomplete corner, then it becomes very solid. But if he plays another move from the 4-4 four, four point, white can still kind of... has a lot of options to reduce or invade. Right? He can, he can make a co. There, there's a lot of options left, but there's a significantly less amount of options against this corner. So usually, um, we say white should play against this corner first. Uh, but white approaches here. This is a better direction against the stone from just with regards to the Q16 stone. Um, because white has a low stone here at F17. So if white approached at the top, um, it's hard to make, consolidate this in one move. And since this stone is low, it's hard to expect much territory. Right? You could play like this, but. Um, You all, white ends up very low in all third line, and this isn't good because basically in this kind of shape, white could only expect to make points at the top, and compared to the rest of the board, it would be very uh, lackluster. So white plays here, black jumps. Um, interesting choice to play high. I I think it's probably oh, it's interesting. So this is a normal Joseki, but uh, this stone, white gets settled pretty easily, and the right side was originally black's. So it makes a lot of sense that black should pincer here to put pressure on the white stones and to start expanding from the bottom right. When white gets settled easily, now this stone it can it can still enclose itself, I think. No, nope. this stone can still enclose itself, but it could have got expanded much farther. All right. So if you compare that to say a black place here, and this is a norm another normal joseki, you can make this exchange. Then the right side becomes much bigger and much more. Um, yeah, it just becomes bigger, right? White, black can try to get more there. Whereas in the game, white white gets a very good, nice shape. It's a very very strong shape, and it's in between black's positions. So black didn't really make use of his original stone placement. Uh, black extends here. I am probably to stop white from approaching the top, but it's still bigger for black to play something in the bottom right. So white approaches, and black pincers. This black wants to stop white from making territory here. However, white is already pretty strong in this with this group up here. So picking a fight with a pincer is pro is not um, very good. And then white plays this attacking move. Um, there is something black needs. So this is on the vital point of black shape. So black has to run out, and then white runs out. Normally, white should play here. Actually, white should play here, and then when black runs out, white runs out, and white ends up splitting the two black stones apart. So this ends up being pretty good. Um, but in the game. White plays here, so black has to take care of this bottom group because of the stone and the group on the right. And so black took care of the group on the right. White forced once, I don't know if it was necessary, and then plays here. And now the bottom group is in danger. It can still, yeah, it can still live, but black now has a weak group on the right, black has a weak group on the bottom. White has strong shapes, 
these two stones are working well with the bottom left corner to develop something. Um, so this pincer ends up being much too close to the rest of the shapes. This way would have been easy to, easy also easy to play. Um, and we can see, okay, so maybe black says, I don't want to deal with that, I'm going to make shape on the bottom. Uh, probably this one. Uh, that's a test of G. If white goes here, black goes here, and if white goes down, black goes on top. So black can connect. But either way, after that, white will attack the stone. And now this stone is going to have a very difficult time living here. Um, white is very strong down here and very strong in the upper right. So it seems difficult to make the stone work. And because of that, you don't want to s jump into a territory just because you can stop, you know, just because you don't want white to get that area. You have to play a little bit more patiently. You could even give white some territory. Uh, maybe not like that. You can just back off. This is a very old Josaki, no one plays it. But, you know, it's hard for white to really defend this in one move. White plays here, but there's still a lot of Aji. There's an attach here, attach here. This is a vital point. There's a lot of Aji still. Um, but yeah, when you jump into a position that has a strong group near it, it's usually not going to end up for working very well. Which is what we see. And again, white plays like this, black jumps, and white makes this exchange. Black is trying to live, um, but it doesn't really work out well. White basically just at this point says, okay, you can have one of your groups, right? One of them will be okay. The other one will be in trouble. And at this point, White, I, I was really surprised. White plays some really um, quite advanced uh, killing sequence. Although, I hadn't really looked at it earlier. But I feel like this might work too. Yeah, this one's similar for, similar for black. Um, just like this. It's a co, not really. White just throws in. But this is quite advanced, being able to recognize that you have this throw-in at that point. I wouldn't expect it from a 5Q. Um, but anyway, so white ends up killing this group. And the bottom group lives, right? But it lives with two points. While white has this great wall, black, and kills the group on the right. So the main point of this is you have to stick way back here. Black loses the opportunity to take control of the right hand side. Once white has a stone here, there's not a lot black can do to stop white from gaining control. Black makes it even more difficult by not playing over here. So when white approaches, black finally recognizes, oh, I want to, you know, gain control of the right hand side. I want to stop white from doing this. But at this point, when you pincer, it's too late. Um, okay, so black could pin hound on the inside, and this would be playable. If I can remember the Joe Sucky. Right, black could jump in here, and white gets Sente and a very big, nice Moy on the bottom. Um, even if this happens, white's group in the upper right is perfectly placed to disrupt black doing anything here. Well, white gets a very nice shape on the bottom. Um, white, if white was, you know, white could have, but white could have played more severe too and attacked both sides. It's the same idea. Black has two groups, white has a strong group here, and white has a, a not so strong, but a group that he can use to split black. Oh, I could also just play the old Josuke, this one. And, you know, again, black can't deal with one side or the other side. Um, so it's important to recognize these opportunities 
not opportunity. It's important to recognize in the early stages where what you're going to give away and what you don't want to give away. Black's play up through the beginning was I'm going to give white the right hand side. I will take the top and he should take the bottom. But when he gets je when he gets jealous and says I want to take the right hand side, then black gets in into trouble. Um, white could have played more severely, but black didn't take the chance. And then the strategic issue is having two groups on two sides of this of a white of this white group makes it very difficult for black deal. And yeah, from there it's um, very good play on white's part to recognize how to kill this group. Like extremely good play, um, but it's also falls into the base overall strategic plan, where I will say it again. Yeah, black created two groups on the same opposite sides of this one week group. Okay, that's it for today. Very short, thirty minute episode. Um, I have a few announcements. The first is I'm going to be streaming every day, um, probably for a half hour to an hour. I'm still working on the exact time. I'm going to aim to do it at 6 o'clock now, but um, if that gets too hectic, I'm going to push it back to 6.30. Um, the other announcement I have is, oh, so on Tuesdays I want to do queue reviews. So I'm going to make an inbox that people can send reviews to if you're so interested. Otherwise, I'll just keep asking people I know who are queue players that I'll review their games. Um, and, oh, but the other announcement I had was that there is a tournament, the 2015 Creators Invitational, that um, I organized, and I'm doing that with a whole bunch of other YouTube and Twitch and <coughs> Go content creators, and that is scheduled to start on February 7th. There's a Reddit thread and a few other threads. Um, you could check that out. It's going to be really fun. Everyone involved is kind of excited. Uh, it's the first kind of event. Darren's going to be casting it. It's the first kind of event that, like, you know, you have all these internet names and players, but you don't have anything people can watch. So I, it'll be fun. It'll be cool. You should check it out. Okay. Um, thank you for watching, and I will be back tomorrow.